we got this clip here. Alex Brusowitz tweeted it. Credit to Joey Manorino. And the show is Breakfast Club. Brusowitz says black Americans call into top rated radio show The Breakfast Club and slam the sham verdict. Trump got did dirty. I don't trust the system at all, especially after being through the system myself. I rock with Trump. He's way better than Biden. He then goes on to call out Biden for his racist policies in the 80s. All right, so let's play this clip. Apparently, four out of four callers. (laughs) Peace, TK. What up, Charlamagne? What up, Jeff? What up? What's your thoughts, brother? Well, I'm going to tell you, man, I feel like Trump got dead dirty. And I don't trust the system at all. You know what I mean? Um, Especially being through the system. I'm the same one that called yesterday about that dog situation. So it's like after you've been railroaded by this system and you see that when you walk in the courtroom, they want you to be guilty. You're going to be guilty. I don't got no trust in that process at all. You know what I mean? I rock with Trump. I feel like that he um, he's way better than Biden. You know, Biden, I can't stand him. Biden the devil, man. Biden the <laughs> in the 90s. I know y'all got family members that was victim of that. The 86 mandatory minimum sentencing, 88 uh, crack law, 94 crime bill. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. for sure. Terrible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, TK. I, I Isn't that been, incredible? Been, I mean, that's amazing. one of the most popular black, black shows in America. I've been saying this for a long time. I, I have always opposed mandatory minimums. Judges should have discretion. Juries should have discretion. And Biden's policies... Were, were detrimental. It's it's for whatever reason, Democrats love being on the wrong side of how how law and order should be working. Now, what are they doing? Now they're letting the criminals go. I, I'm like, OK, is there a happy medium, perhaps, where we don't lock people up for minimum mandatory sentences on first offenses and then not release them when they commit violent crimes? I mean, come on. Oh. A, a guy's got a drug charge for the first time, and they say four years in prison in Illinois. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. This is another reason why people need to vote for President Trump. He's the, he's really the first Republican ever to be president to champion criminal justice reform. OK, this is something this was a Democrat talking point that President Trump actually reclaimed for the Republicans, something that Republicans are just, you know, totally unappreciative for. And, uh, you know, with the first his uh, first uh, first step uh First Step Act policies, he was able to drive a lot of first time voters, uh, you know, former felons, uh, you know, a lot of people in the black community. This is why President Trump had some of the highest, uh, highest numbers during his uh, first administration as it related to popularity in the black community compared to other Republican administrations uh, because of his efforts to really be a champion for criminal justice reform, which is something now that I think he's taken to the next level since he himself is a political prisoner and he himself is calling himself a political prisoner. Moments uh, yesterday after he was found guilty on all 34 counts, the landing page for his donation page for the website, which, by the way, crashed within the first five minutes of it being launched because so many people were rushing to donate to President Trump, the greatest president ever. And uh, it says, I'm a political prisoner. So he's only going to become more relatable to everybody in this country who can relate to the power struggle that exists in this dichotomy that is created between an authority figure and an ordinary citizen. It here's, doesn't, here's, here's, yeah. No, here's a question for you guys. Uh, who's the greatest president of the past hundred years? President Trump. <laughs> I knew your answer. You said it too. What do you mean? You said, said of it my in lifetime. lifetime. I'm 38. But the reason I'm asking this is because I think there's a reasonable case that Donald Trump is the best president of the past 100 years. And the only reason I limit it to 100 is I'm going to give the founding fathers the best. I'm not going to say the greatest president we've ever had because I, I, I got a Jefferson, uh, George Washington, fantastic jobs. But I don't know who has been, in terms of the modern context of their presidency, better than Trump. In, in, in the modern era. And, and what, what, what I want to specify this. He's going to be the best president ever, not to interrupt you. But look, they say, oh, Lincoln was the best president ever because he freed the slaves. Well, I think that Donald Trump is going to be freeing more slaves than Abraham Lincoln, because at the end of the day, we're all slaves of the new world order. Think about no. it. Donald Trump is going to. Donald Trump. <laughs> no, Donald Trump. Seriously, I'm not even trying to be funny. Donald Trump is literally no. going to uh, break us and, and, and save us from bondage of the new world order. We are all going to become slaves to to a communist regime. Communism has claimed the lives of over 100 million people. So people want to say, oh, you can't say that anyone's better than Abraham Lincoln because Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Well, Donald Trump is literally about to free more slaves than Abraham Lincoln. Well, the 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 way I'd put it is 
we can look at the great things throughout history, and I can say George Washington, reluctant first president for a new nation, tremendous job leading the Revolutionary War and, and his tremendous successes. Thomas Jefferson, party to the creation of the Declaration of Independence, great president. But in terms of a modern context, the problems they faced, look, I feel kind of bad. We've had presidents where literally nothing happened, and they presided over uneventful presidencies because they did their jobs and they went home. And so because they did not have a great crisis, we don't remember them. Donald Trump faced the great crisis, a border crisis, the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, escalations of war. He gave us de-escalation of war, peace agreements. The one, the, the one thing I, I was adamant, we were talking about like, what should, you know, we have only 15 minutes with Trump, and we got to ask him specific questions. And I was like, I think immigration economy is the big one we got to ask because the deportation thing everyone's know about, and then prosecutions. But I was like, I don't care. I got to ask him what it was like when he crossed the DMZ into North Korea, because this is the most, it is tremendous. It's the greatest thing a president's done in my lifetime. And I can't even, I don't even, and I say lifetime because I don't know, you know, I wasn't alive. But when I look back at the past presidents, the idea that Donald Trump, a U.S. president, would go to the border of an enemy nation we are at war with, invite the leader to come and meet with him, and then abruptly say, I will walk with you into your country with no security detail. So we, we were talking to some of the Trump guys and they were like, Secret Service was freaking out. Trump walked into North Korea. They, they were like, we were waiting for the black bags to fly well, at any say moment. In the interview, like in the buildings on the side, you could see a lot of motion happening. Yep. I'm sure they were like, please don't do this. But he had a purpose. The this only is, guy that was clo- as close to Trump was Eisenhower. Right. It's the only one that was close. And he spoke out against the military industrial yeah. complex. Yeah. But when I look at... Uh, uh, Bush, H.W. Uh, uh, Bush. He literally dodged shoes. He did the, what? He dodged that's shoes. That's the other the Bush. Pussy. Oh, no, that, that's that's oh, w. No, w. Bush. I'm talking about the Bushes in general. Like, I mean, these these people do not, presidents. they do not, they do not have courage. They, <laughs> Donald Trump is literally willing to risk his life for our country. There's nobody else that would be willing to give up their life. Donald Trump has given up his life for now, our country. Now I'm imagining, he has. I'm imagining some leftist throwing a shoe at Trump and he looks and it <laughs> hits him in the face and bounces off and he doesn't flinch. He, he doesn't. He, he's like, I'm not like Bush. No, but, but he's proven time and time again that he. he what a sad you know, he, throw. He, <laughs> he, sad, sad throw. You're a sad. He, man. he he is willing to take a bullet for our country. He takes. He's been taking bullets every single day for every single American citizen for the last eight years of his life. So he, when we look would, at the fact that he put himself in danger in North Korea, he puts himself in danger every single day because let's be honest, the deep state would love to assassinate Donald Trump. That's what I'm worried about. Um. You know, people people right now, there's a poll I saw and it said, do you think they will put Donald, Donald Trump in jail? And the other night I was thinking house arrest makes the most sense. But then uh, Brandon Strzok was like, I think they're going to put him in jail. And then I said, you know what? He's probably right. We uh, what, what was the first thing we, we, we all said? Oh, they're, they're not going to impeach Donald Trump. It, they, that's way too far. And then they did. No, they're, they're not going to criminally charge him. That, that would be ridiculous. No one thinks there's going to be criminal charges. They're just trying to run this up to get yeah. it charged him. Yeah, well, n- he's not going to get convicted. They're not going to get a mug shot. It's gonna be, Got a right. mug shot. Remember that? Th- there's, no, there's not going to be a perp walk. There's not going to be a, there's, it's, it's going to be a hung jury. He'll be convicted. Convicted. And now they're saying they're not going to put him in jail. I'm like, dude, they're going to put him in jail. And if that doesn't work, it's going to escalate, escalate, escalate. Yeah, they want to put him in Rikers. Like, they're talking about the most violent jails. They talked about Fulton County Jail, where somebody mm. literally died from getting eaten alive by bed bugs, where people get shanked by gangbangers every single day. Rikers? Are you kidding me? They put they put the most hardened gangbangers in Rikers. You're going to put Donald Trump in Rikers? Give me a break. And it's all about the optics, right? Like, it, with I, I go back to the like, mugshot example. It, they just they're going to put him in jail. They just want to be able to circulate the image of him ha- being behind bars or in having a jumpsuit a in a jumpsuit they want yeah. the orange jumpsuit oh, yeah. his signature They're color you know jail. what i'm saying like yep. it's it's just so that they can have this moment and again to to sort of put it in their history books and say no but you can't argue with me he went to jail so he must be a bad guy but, whereas i think i know a lot of a lot of americans know the justice system isn't actually as uh functional or as equal as we'd like it to be and there are a lot of people who are uh investigated or who are scrutinized by uh the by the judicial system when they don't deserve it you want to know something yes i will literally handcuff myself to rikers if they love <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to do it. No, I, I hey. handcuff myself to Twitter. I will literally handcuff myself to well, Rikers if they try I'll just to arrest you. I don't care. Yeah. I will go to jail for Donald Trump. They, they, they want the photo of him in the jumpsuit. I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to do it. I think they want him in a jumpsuit. I don't know if it'll be orange. 
because they, they I think they do white ones for like minimum security prisons, but they they are not they're not satisfied with the mugshot and they have no other political plan. Have the Democrats offered up any any kind of policy pa- plan for 2024? Have, has Joe Biden come out and says, here's our list of policy proposals for the next administration? No, all he does is say, well, remember how terrible January 6th was? Yep. Oh, remember how mean tr- Trump was? Remember this thing? Like, he doesn't actually take accountability for any of his policies, any of the things he's done to the American public, any of the uh, challenges that are really affecting day-to-day voters. Uh, instead, it's all about, well, Trump is very, very bad, and I don't like him. And that's the only way to stop it. Trump, 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 which, you know, we can talk about Do- Donald Trump all day long, but at a certain point, it's allowing Joe Biden to not be held accountable for his failures as leader of this nation. Thanks for watching this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.